Hey everybody, it's Seth Jones, Editor-in-Chief of Landscape Management Magazine, out in Overland Park, Kansas. I just got the demonstration on the Scythe robotic mower. I'm being joined by the COO and co-founder of the company, Isaac Roberts. Isaac, thanks for taking the time to uh, show me what's going on today. And uh, I guess first, can you just talk to me about the, the process of setting up an area to get mowed by the robotic mower? Yeah, so the goal for us is that we would have a landscaping company bring the robot out to the property and then teach it the property by driving around the perimeter. And then once the perimeter is known by the robot, we'd just be able to run autonomy and then it would go and start doing the work that the normal, normally the landscaper would do. So I saw you do it, you just kind of jumped on it, you, you know, just the time it took to drive around. And then you also said it kind of learns, it gets better as it, as it learns the property? Yeah, so we're recording information the entire time the robot's running around, so every single thing that it sees new, for example, before this property it's never seen any kind of hay bales or anything like that. So this is all information that will get sent up for training data, and then once it's labeled and put into the training data set, we'll be able to identify these objects better in the future. And the more it sees, the better it sees, the more people it sees, the more scenarios it sees, all of that is being implemented, and then uh, long term it's continuously optimizing uh, these behaviors. Okay, and something we had a group here that we were talking, that you were talking to, and you were talking about uh, something that caught my ear was that you know not only is it for, for you seeing it as a labor saver, but also as an environmentally in friendly solution. We talked to me about uh, how you've thought about this affecting the environment. Yeah, so paraphrasing here, there's no official mission statement, but I kind of look at these in uh, three pillar format, right? So we believe, like I, I look at this and see what we're doing at Scythe is to um, use advanced technology. Um, to scale human labor in service of the environment, right? And so what we're really doing is we're taking brand new technology from different areas of industry and saying, this is something that can go and help us take care of the planet in a way that we've never been able to before. And so instead of having landscapers that are building or that are taking care of areas with gas-based systems, we're bringing electricity to it and saying, we can go zero emission here. Not only that, we can scale labor uh, so that instead of struggling to find the people to do the jobs, we can take robots and go ahead and get that work done uh, autonomously instead. And then that way we can use the human labor to do higher value tasks, like pick up trash and other things that robots can't yet do. Okay, uh, one last question, and, it was, and I'm sorry for surprising you with this one, but you talked about the pay, the, like someone said, how much does it cost? You're always gonna get that sure. question, you know, and you kind of took a breath, and then you talked about the concept that you guys have. Can you give me a quick version of the way that you plan, on the, the way you foresee the cost of this equipment going? Yeah, so we want to charge based on the usage, not based on the sale of a machine, which is completely different from what everybody's used to, right? Uh, having said that, everybody's used to a scenario where you buy a machine and then you're responsible for that machine. You have parts and labor problems that go into that machine and that's all a uh, financial problem for the landscaping company. And we don't see that as being heavily aligned with the landscapers. What we want to see is a scenario where we hand a robot to a landscaping company and they say, great, this is something I can scale my business with. They can have certainty around the costs for the property and they can have certainty knowing that we're going to make, maintain and fix any of the machine problems that come up. So these are not things where we go and say, well, it's your robot now, so you can go and fix it. We want to say, look, we're really good at robots. We're not good at landscaping. We can make robots that are really good at landscaping to take care of the work. And then you guys can tell us what you need uh, from us to make sure that that machine is always running around because we don't actually charge based on some kind of delivery of a unit. We're charging based on the work that the robot does, just like a person would. And then the other thing you said was that uh, if one of them breaks down, you got a fleet of 10 of them, one of them break down, you guys are going to have an extra one shipped to them or on site or, or how does that work? Yeah, so in the early days, we're looking to place 10 units with a company. Uh, so the company will take $10,000 and hand that over to Scythe. That covers our shipping cost for those 10 robots to go over to the landscaper. But instead of sending just 10, we're going to send 11. And that 11th unit is going to sit in standby, waiting for one of those other 10 machines to go bad or have a problem. When that does happen, hopefully it takes a long time for that to happen, and that's our goal. But when and if it does, they take that robot that's been down and has a problem. Uh, we bring number 11 alive. They put the unit that has a problem back on that crate, and then we pay for the shipping back and forth for that downed unit. And by the time this whole process is even done getting kicked off, we have another robot going over to fill that number 11 space. Do you have a ballpark on when, how much, I know you've been at it for three and a half years already. Any guess on when it's going to be readily available? Yeah, so we're, we're working with companies right now in Florida and Texas. Uh, we have a couple, a couple companies that we're working heavily with. Um, those are the companies that we're putting these machines into operations with and testing them out. Uh, we're production constrained by a good bit. There's a lot of demand for what we're doing. Um, but I would say general availability ballpark probably sometime uh, middle of 2023.
Okay, great. Isaac, thanks for your time and thanks for uh, showing us the robot today. It was cool. Yeah, thanks for coming out, Seth. I really appreciate it. Okay. Everybody, this is Isaac Roberts with Scythe. I'm Seth Jones. Thanks for checking in with us here on Landscape Management TV.